All right, so in the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at exponential functions. Now, earlier in the algebra review, we already looked at laws of exponents. We went over some of the basics there, so you'll, you'll remember that, you know, for, um, well, if k is, is a natural number, so if k is 1, 2, 3, and so on, when we write a to the power k, we just mean a times a times a, right? Um, it's, we think of this as repeated multiplication. So it's a times a times a, and you do that k times. Um, and, and that works for a while, but, but you know, eventually you want to generalize uh, to cases where maybe k is an integer, so we allow for exponent 0. We allow for negative exponents, uh, and then you want to move on and maybe allow for rational exponents as well. And so eventually, you know, you, you come to the, you know, your rules, right? So we have these rules. And I'm not going to repeat all the laws of exponents. We've seen some of them, but we know that, for example, um, a to the, let's say, m plus n is the same thing as a to the m times a to the n, right? And we say that a to the minus k is the same thing as 1 over, over a to the k. Um, and you can, you can make sense of these in terms of this, this basic idea that exponentiation is repeated multiplication because, you know, if you think about division, right, if you're, if you're dividing, right, so for example, let's say I have something like 2 to the 4, and I want to multiply by 2 to the minus 2, right? Well, on the one hand, this rule here says that that should be 2 to the 4 minus 2, so it should be 2 squared, which is 2 times 2. On the other hand, if I'm doing 2 to the 4 times 1 over over 2 squared, right? Then that's, well, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2, right? And 4 on the top, 2 on the bottom. You can cancel. There's 2 left over. Again, you get 2 squared, and so on, right? Um, you can make sense of something like, you know, a to the 1 over n. Why is that equal to the nth root of a? Well, that's because if I do a to the 1 over n to the power n, right? Well, that's a to the 1 over n times a to the 1 over n, right? And again, we do that n times. So it's a to the 1 over n plus 1 over n, All right? Again, 1 over n added to itself n times is a to the n times oops, 1 over n, which is just a to the 1, right? You get a. So, so you can make sense of all these rules, um, and, and basically, you know, you start with this idea of repeated multiplication. From repeated multiplication, you derive these rules. And then at some point, you want to move on, right? You want to consider negative exponents. You want to consider rational exponents. Um, we want to be able to define exponential functions as a function of a real variable, right? Um, so if you want to define things as a function of a real variable, well, then you kind of have to generalize it. And the way you generalize is you say, well, really, ultimately, you just say that the rules, the rules of the thing, right? So we have this one, the other one that's missing, which we already sort of see in action there, is, is this one, right? So you take these rules and you kind of generalize and you use this to produce a function, right? And so for any positive real number a, right? So a here is a real number. 
you can define a function. So you define, let's say, f of x equals a to the x. Right? Um, so in this case, right, the, your input x is a real number. And, and you can actually do this for any real number. As long as a is positive, this will be defined for all real numbers x. And the output is just a raised to that power. And so you say, OK, well, do we know what we're doing here? Do we know how this works? Well, we, we know what to do if a is, sorry, if x, right? So we know this for, we know what this means if, if x is a natural number, right? If x is a natural number, then we have this repeated multiplication. OK. We know what it means if x is an integer, right? Because we know how to handle negative exponents. And, and we know how to handle a to the 0, right? Because if, uh, if, if n is equal to minus m, let's say m minus n, right? I get 0, right? But then you're just doing a number divided by itself. You get 1. So we know that a to the 0 should be 1, right? Um, and, and so then you say, well, what about if we have a rational number? What if x is rational? Well, actually, we know how to handle that, too, because we know how to deal with reciprocals, right? Things where you have 1 over, over an integer. We know how to deal with that. And we have this rule here. So if I wanted to do uh, a to some rational number, let's say something of the form p over q, we know that we can do that as a to the 1 over q and raised to the power p. Um, or if you like, a to the power p and then to the power 1 over q. Right? doesn't matter where you do, whether you do the power first and then the root, or the root and then the power. Right? Um, keeping in mind, remember that a is positive here. So we don't have to worry about, well, what if a is negative? Right? That's not something that we're going to consider. Uh, so we know how to deal with, with rational numbers. And now the question is, well, how do, you, how do you extend things? How do you deal with a real number? Um, and here's maybe where a little bit of calculus comes into the picture. Um, and, and so what we can say is, well, we'll, we'll deal with real numbers. Um, maybe we could say by continuity. Um, and what do we mean by that? Well, what we mean by that is that you can, of course, plot an exponential function, right? Um, so if we had, so here's some axes. And, and so we can, I'm going to plot, let's say a is bigger than 1. So if a is bigger than 1, it's going to go up like this, right? So we know that a of 0 is, is 1, right? And then, you know, we get that, and then so... So we plot our, our integer values, right? Uh, then you fill in the rational values, and you get something like that. Um, and, and I mean, it's actually better than this, because you know, the, the rationals have this property of being dense in the reals. Right? Um, in, in calculus, we usually don't get into these technical details, but um, one of the things that you can prove is that choose any two real numbers you want. There's always a rational number in between them. So the rational numbers are packed in there really tightly, really close. But we know that the rationals aren't everything. There are irrationals. In fact, there are, in some sense, more irrational numbers than rational. Um, but you kind of the way you define it for for a real variable is by just kind of, you know, connecting the dots, right? So. To get, to get your exponential function of a real variable, you fill in the gaps. And, and the continuity just means that you, know, you, you fill it in so you get this, this continuous unbroken line, right? You're not going to suddenly put a point up here. You're going to follow the curve, right? Uh, and that's, that's one way of thinking about how you might define an exponential function of a real variable.